Um, our next panel is going to be led by Beth Blauer. Uh, Beth is uh, near and dear to my heart. She was uh, one of the first people who I spoke with uh, when I interviewed at Socrata a little over three years ago. Uh, she's a well-known proponent of open government, transparency, and utilization. Currently, she is the executive director at Johns Hopkins University's uh, Center for Government Excellence, and she will be uh, first speaking a little bit about a Bloomberg Philanthropies initiative targeted at mid-sized cities to help them better use data and evidence. Uh, she will then invite a panel uh, of people from the What Work Cities program to share a little bit about their experience. So please welcome to the stage, Beth Blauer. Is there a clicker? I feel like I should tell everyone to come closer. Everyone seems so spread out. Is there a clicker around here, Marcus? This is a, uh, oh, clicker. All right. I feel very much at home here at the Socrata Conference. Um, some of, uh, I think, most important work that I did um, happened as a team member there, so I'm super happy to be back um, this year in a slightly um, less important role, um, but certainly not um, um, any shortage of fun. So thanks for being here. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what work cities. So um, at the end of last, um, at the end of last summer, um, uh, I was working at Socrata and I was approached by the people at Bloomberg Philanthropies who were thinking about um, creating a program designed for cities. Um, and they were just doing some informational interviews where we started to, they started to ask about um, what, do, what were some of the biggest challenges that mid-sized mayors were facing across the United States. And as they were having these conversations, um, one sort of theme started to emerge um, very much um, over and over again, um, which was the mayors of mid-sized cities um, knew that there was data and evidence that was being produced in their programs and throughout the work that they were doing but they didn't have any clear lines of visibility on how to use that data and evidence in their own decision making when they were thinking about setting priorities, when they were writing talking points, when they were doing things, there just was um, an inability to really extract great value from work that they knew already was happening in their cities. And so the people at Bloomberg Philanthropies decided to help mid-sized mayors in particular around um, building capacity to do more work with data and evidence. And as part of that, um, they asked me to move over from Socrata. I say that Kevin Merritt traded me to the Bloomberg people. Um, but I got traded, um, and I joined a team, um, a brand new team for, at Johns Hopkins University, who was going to be responsible for helping usher in this new program through Bloomberg Philanthropies. Um, and so we created an organization called GovEx, um, the Center for Government Excellence at Johns Hopkins University. And over the next three years, we'll be going to between 100 and 150 mid-sized cities in the United States and doing discovery sessions with mayors to essentially create a national baseline on the ability for mayors to use data and evidence in their daily work. And as part of that, not only are we going out there and are we doing that um, baselining, but we're also working with those cities to determine whether or not an ecosystem of partners that we're building can come in and provide services um, to help close the gaps on the areas where we think that cities could use some additional help. Um, at Hopkins, not only are we building out the capacity to do this discovery, we're working on two primary tasks. Over the next three years, I'll work with my team um, with 100 cities on building the capacity to do open data work or advancing open data programs. The second piece of what we'll do is we will also work with a comparable amount of cities, um, maybe slightly less, hopefully, um, on building or starting um, stat programs or performance management programs in the city. So it's not just about freeing data and getting data opened, but also making government the first consumers of data so that inherently the value of data improves over time and we have the ability to make a big impact on outcomes that are important to people who are living in cities. 
sitting beneath us at the university is an enormous wealth of researchers that are wanting to really do work in cities. And so we're conveniently housed in the Center for the 21st Century City at Hopkins. And that gives us access to a lot of the different schools and researchers. And instead of sort of the traditional university model, where we have researchers who have developed research and then try to get into cities to try to play out their research on the ground, we're actually creating a pipeline from the mayoral level of opportunities for research that we're farming out to researchers across Johns Hopkins University. So it will be a truly led research, in research initiative. Um, and as part of that, we will be working with these cities not only to improve their own acuity of, to do this work, but we're also creating a network of users. So we'll have 100 cities in this network. And the idea here is that we are working under the assumption that the best teacher for another city is another city. And so how do we make the right connections at the program level so that open data and performance can be the backdrop of some really high impact changes that create networks throughout cities so that no city is doing something for the first time. No city is trying to solve the same problem um, without having a core peer group that they can share data and evidence. And that includes creating normalization environments at the metadata layer and, and even more um, significantly at the data layer so that they can compare their, their progress with each other. And the way that we're doing that is by collecting subject matter experts and then um, lending them to the effort. So working with people like Andrew Nicklin and Carter Hughley, who have been here at the conference, um, and other folks on our team, we're going out and we're lending the subject matter expertise to cities, um, and we're helping cities uh, make these connections. But doing that also creating a big knowledge base so that any city who wants to do this work can tap into the network and understand how they can improve their program around the use of data and evidence. So we're not doing this alone. Um, like I said, we have a very generous um, first investor at Bloomberg Philanthropies, but it's part of the What Works Cities initiative. We have a team of partners. So while we're, we're focused on the early stages of this work, we also are partnered with the Sunlight Foundation, who's going to be working with a large number of our open data cities, standing up open data policies that will be consistent across the cities that are engaged in the program. We're also working with the Harvard Kennedy School with mayors who are a little bit more mature in their practice and they want to start integrating some of the concepts of performance into the relationship that they have with vendors. So looking at the way that government buys goods and services and understanding whether or not they can, instead of buying a good and service, they can buy outcomes or actually buy the impact that they're seeking through the relationship that they're having in that spend. And then finally, we're partnered with the Behavioral Insights team where they're working on creating nudge units in government. Has anyone heard of a nudge unit? It's basically, all right, so we've got a few people. It's basically, creating the ability for government to lead their own A-B testing and low-cost evaluations to really drive um, um, incredible impact in short periods of time by implementing evaluation throughout programmatic um, uh, throughout the, prog th the programmatic cycle. So we're just getting started. Um, so far, at the, um, we've been in 40 cities uh, where we've done these discovery sessions. And we have nine active cities where we have en engagements um, through GovX. So these are the cities that we're working with. I'm going to bring some of our um, city folks out. And we're going to talk a little bit about the work that they're doing today. Um, but you can see here that we have the nine um, that are working on a blend of uh, performance management and open data. Um, and this is just a review of sort of the three things that we're doing. But in addition to discovery and open data and performance and this advanced analytics that we're also working on with cities, we're creating a curriculum. So Johns Hopkins University is going to be creating a certification um, that will be available to our partners in cities so that if you've got some folks on your team that have skills at a certain level but they want to increase their skills so that they can engage um, in more detailed analytics or that they can get to the next level in open data, we're going to be creating a certification path for those folks and it will also be available to students on campus. So at the same time, you know, we want to have an impact on the culture of government, but we also want to be able to create a pipeline or deepen the bench in government. So the idea is that we're leveraging our relationship with the university to be able to provide those resources um, into the participating cities. 
Um, the, so um, instead of, I think, going through these, which I gave you an overview of sort of the program, I'd love to just bring people out and talk a little bit about what this looks like on the ground. Um, so if I could just have my city partners come on out. Hi, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> I'll have everybody. Do we have enough seats for everybody? Yeah. Yep. I think we're good. So I'm going to have, um, I think, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to have everyone just introduce themselves, um, talk about the city, um, you know, what city you're from, and then also what are the, what are the areas where we're partnering. Uh, sure. So my name is Eric Roche. I'm the Chief Data Officer with the City of Kansas City, Missouri. We're a city of about 450,000 people, and yes, we are in Missouri, not Kansas. We were never in Kansas. <laughs> Kansas City Royals, Missouri. All right, um, so I work with the Office of Performance Management, which is this really cool kind of performance data skunk works that we've set up within the city manager's office, uh, which gives us a little bit of permanency within the city, and also the ability to really work with departments on a regular basis. So over the last several years, we've developed really great relationships with all of our departments, and we have a very deep understanding of how they operate. Uh, we've also been uh, using open data where we can to kind of dog food and uh, really that's where we get our performance data from. And it's a really nice system and we, we, we get all our data from there. We run performance analytics on it. When we find mistakes, we can fix them on open data. And we're using really open data kind of as, um, as we were talking about earlier today in some of the sessions is I think it was, um, I forget the term, but like the bottom of our pyramid really. It's where we put everything and it, it's great to tackle transparency and performance with the same data set and it, it's just, it's worked very well for us so far. Uh, but part of what we've been struggling with is how do we expand from here? We have a centralized open data office. I'm only one person. I have one great staff member in IT. So we partnered with What Works Cities to really help us create some structure and what are the best practices around expanding our open data program. And we're moving into data governance at this point in time, led by the city manager's office, right? That's typically something that a lot of IT departments would look into. By having the city manager's office there, we can go into these departments and say, no, you, you are going to give us this data. You are going to carry out these tasks. This is something that we've put in ordinance now. We're going to go forward with it. Uh, so on the open data side of things, we're going to have a lot better understanding of what this data means. We're going to create people in every department who own this data who are responsible for it, but are also responsible to their peers, right? So when you, one department is putting in for a grant application, and they need to know how many dangerous buildings the Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department has, they'll know exactly who to contact or exactly what data does and does not exist on the portal. So we're creating that community of users. And that's something that we, we hadn't really thought of until we partnered with What Works Cities. The other thing that we're looking at uh, is our KC Stat performance management side of things. Uh, KC Stat is a public report out. It's modeled after the Baltimore Stat program. I won't go into a lot of detail about that one, other than it's a very high level report out of how is the city doing to meet council goals and priorities on it in a, a data based way, you know, in an objectifiable, uh, objectifiable way. We also have an internal PM system where we meet with divisions, departments, and the city managers there. And that's where we do things like talk about potholes on one intersection for three hours or dig really, really deep into that low-level performance data. And that's where you can start to apply uh, best practices and business principles. And for a long time, we've kind of been uh, a mile wide and an inch deep on that. And through what works, we are really scoping in, and the department directors are working with us to figure out exactly what problems they feel that we can tackle with data. And we can do that because we have those relationships built, and our department directors are fairly data savvy because we've been working with them for years now. So we're really looking forward to what issues our department directors are going to come up with and tackling them and hoping to produce, uh, hoping to produce a lot of results. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa? Hi, I'm Melissa Shigoda, and I work uh, for the City of New Orleans in the Office of Performance and Accountability. Um, we've been around for about five years now, and um, we do a large performance management report every quarter that covers about 50 departments. Um, and we also do a variety of stat programs and have recently started an analytics program as well. Um, we're working with What Works Cities in, a, in two different areas, um, one around open data, and the second area is around low cost evaluation. Um, in the open data space, um, we started a data governance committee um, this past spring. Um, we're working really closely with our IT department on that. It's co-chaired by our director and the director of IT. 
And um, we've been doing open data for many years now. We've had an open data portal. Um, but what we've really been trying to move towards is a more systematic, a more, um, you know, a more a w way that makes more sense to do that, to make it sustainable in the long term and to make it as useful as possible for folks. Um, uh, so what Work City has been huge help with that, with um, getting our first open data policy drafted. Um, and we're very excited about that. And also tying that to our performance, um, performance management work in that we're trying to, right now we have about 350 indicators that we track quarterly. And for each of those indicators, we're trying to open up the source data behind it so that it's truly transparent and people can see how we're coming up with the, the final counts that we're coming up with. Um, and then there's a reason to keep publishing that data. Um, so starting with what's already being used to make decisions and getting that out there in the fullest way with, that we can. Um, and then in the area of low cost evaluation, um, we're doing a couple different projects. Um, one with code enforcement, um, code enforcement compliance letters and trying to get um, home owners to voluntarily um, comply and fix up their houses, um, which we're predicting will be a huge cost savings to the city. Um, another similar project is with um, sales tax delinquency and trying to get people to voluntarily turn that money in <laughs> with the least hassle as possible on our end. Um, and then the third project is around police recruitment and that's been a huge issue for New Orleans. Um, so we're really excited about that work in both recruiting people to the site to apply to become police officers but then also um, to stick with the process, we're working with behavioral insights to design a communication strategy so that those recruits are getting personalized text messages, reminding them to go to the test, encouraging them you know, to stick with it and remember why they're doing this um, and, and hopefully make it all the way through the process. Great. My name is Tony Yarber. I'm mayor in the city of Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, let me just Give a disclaimer really quick, in uh, Mississippi we do wear shoes, <laughs> and uh, well we do, uh, on through the week, and um, uh, we actually uh, do more than chew tobacco and spit. Uh, but long story short, uh, when I got, when I became mayor, uh, after having served on the city council, uh, I recognized quickly that a co conversation about open data uh, had to be held because uh, my background uh, is is in education. So I was a, uh, a school principal where everything we did revolved around data, uh, whether or not we, t we were talking about uh, children with special needs and uh, performance and uh, um, whether or not we were tracking children and their performance and teachers' uh, performance evaluations. And so when I became mayor, what I realized is that uh, there was no open data for the mayor. And uh, most of the folks wanted open data, data for the citizens, but I realized that there was no real way for me to actually capture the work that we were doing. And the, the struggle for mayors and the struggle for CEOs is to know that work is going on, but not be able to capture that work and to talk about the impacts of the work. And what I quickly came to realize is that in government, we are really, really good at nuance. Uh, there's, uh, while there's a, um, a major in almost every uh, liberal arts university called political science, uh, there's very little science applied in the work of everyday government. And so I wanted to be able to see how we could bring some focus back uh, to the science aspect of the politics that we were doing every day. And so we started uh, attempting about uh, nine or ten months ago trying to pull this together. We knew that each department was creating sets of data. Every department was probably creating hundreds of sets, different sets of data, but uh, which of those pieces of data were actually impactful to the kinds of work that we needed to see, which of those uh, pieces of data did we need to have real live conversations about as related to both our short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. And what we recognized quickly was we did not have the capacity, whether uh, the cap that capacity was in uh, human resources or whether it was in our technologies. And so what we did was we focused on what we could control. And so we look at this open data piece as a conversation about uh, policy, um, uh, processes, uh, innovation, and technology. 
the technology conversation was one that we couldn't have because there was no real opportunity for us to seize the kinds of technology, the kinds of integral technology uh, that would give us an opportunity to do the work that we needed to, to, to see done. The other piece of the conversation was not just about open data, but it was also about uh, performance management. Uh, what I learned quickly was that after about four departmental meetings with our department heads, that everybody came in and wanted to tell a story about what was happening in their department. Well, we're doing this and we're doing that, and I'm thinking to myself, I rolled past that damn pothole yesterday, so surely you're not telling me today is fixed. <laughs> right? But everybody wanted to talk about it, and that was, it was really hard for me to actually see that being played out. And so I needed a way as mayor to be able to go to my handy-dandy little uh, um, cell phone and pull up a dashboard uh, and be able to really, really dig down deep and see if that's actually what's going on. So the vision is to be able to move from having these uh, narrative field department meetings, so we're having data sessions. So when our, our folks walk in, we're strictly talking about goal setting. Uh, where are we in this progress monitoring piece? And how do we turn that information out so that the public can tell us, uh, can see exactly the work that we're doing? Quickly, um, we're getting ready to launch, every year we do a vision casting. Last year, my first year in office, we did a vision casting. This year, we're ramping up for what we're calling Vision 2.0. Well, Vision 2.0 is going to be different this year because Vision 2.0 will be strategically tied to those uh, indicators or sets that we're going to turn out to the public. And we're going to say, here are the things that you have said based on the surveys that you've completed that are important to you. Here's what we are going to commit to doing over the next 12 months, and here's where you can track our progress to be able to see if we're actually doing what we say uh, that we're going to be doing. So uh, WordWorks has come on, brought um, a wealth of support to, to my team of three, and um, uh, they have brought the kind of expertise, uh, the kind of expertise that we could not afford through any kind of procurement process uh, because it's, it's priceless. And so they've come on, taught our folks how to methodically create the kinds of systems that we need in place. And then the next step, of course, is to bring in that technology on board to be able to match the work that we're doing in our policies, our procedures, and in the innovations that we're seeking to make in Jackson. Uh, that's all, I guess. <laughs> Just that. All right. <laughs> I should have set on that end. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to follow. Uh, I'm David Carmody. I'm the Deputy Chief Operating Officer for the City of Chattanooga. Um, we're lucky enough to have a great mayor who came in knowing that he wanted to make open data and performance management part of what he did on a daily basis. So I think that that's really important. So this is kind of something that he started and is very important. And so this has all been driven out of the mayor's office. Um, so I've, I'm lucky enough to be a part of that. And uh, we started out, you know, knowing that people uh, wanted to know about their government. And in order to have a great government, uh, people had to know what you're doing, and so that's where the open data piece com comes in. And then the only, on the other side, we had to pursue uh, excellence internally, and so um, that's where the performance management side came in. And so we kind of married those two, and uh, we started about a year and a half ago, and uh, we made a lot of mistakes and uh, learned a lot through that process. And uh, uh, you know, through Socrata's help, we uh, have an open data portal, a performance site, open budget, and uh, in a short amount of time, but uh, we've kind of learned some lessons and some uh, definite steps that we might have skipped. And so um, our engagement with what works has kind of helped us kind of fill in those gaps. And so one of the things we've realized is that uh, data for data sake is kind of useless. And so um, we have to understand how to prioritize those data sets that we're releasing so that we're not wasting time or uh, resources in order to do that. Um, and so so who is it meaningful to? So we want to start with our departments first through this engagement. I think that that's what we've realized is that's where the work happens and uh, we need to focus on doing great things internally and that kind of rolls up and creates a great story to tell on our performance website to the public. Um, the other part of it is, is you know, what does a STAT program look like? Because all governments are different and uh, you know, there's several different models and so we've been kind of walking through that. Our first stat model was really, uh, you know, all the uh, department administrators sitting around a table with the mayor and uh, talking about the stuff that was on the performance management side. 
but that really just scratches the surface and you can't really have a meaningful in-depth conversation in that environment. And so um, what we've tried to do is figure out a way that works for us. You know, what does that model look like? And I think that um, some of the help that we've gotten through the What Works Cities um, engagement has kind of helped us kind of shape what that looks like. And really it's kind of a two-part um, system where, you know, there's this internal uh, accountability that's maybe on a, a small scale. And then um, there's a larger group where you meet with the mayor and you know that he's engaged and he wants to know about your program and it, it gives it that priority. And so um, we've learned a lot and we're happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much. My name is Daro Mott. I am from California, but I still wear my shoes. I work in Kentucky, which is a great place. Um, invite you to the Derby. Now, I've had the, pr the, the pleasure and privilege of working in a city for a mayor and a wonderful chief of performance and technology who has helped take us on a continuous improvement journey starting in January of 2012. And that journey consists of what we refer to as the Louis Stat program, which um, actually has department stat led by chiefs as well as Louis Stat, where we still bring the senior executive team uh, with the top managers for each department to eva evaluate performance. We have sustainability stat that happens three times a year, as well as vacant and abandoned property stat. We are partnering with um, Beth Blauer and her partners and have at least five streams of work. Um, one stream of work has to do with the, our, our, our data governance and our um, work in planning and design services so that we can actually get better access to the data and integrate our open data for that area with our performance management efforts in a way where we're putting out data sets which are consumed by those who are going to view it, right? It's a very interesting journey. We also have a potential project around procurement, which we're still gathering the internal, um, I guess, buy-in and, and availability to take on procurement. It's a very big issue that we focused on in our traditional performance management efforts. We have three work streams right now with the behavioral insights team. And just like New Orleans, we're looking at compliance with our property maintenance code. It's just to get um, you know, property owners to comply with the notice, you know, um, with uh, the notices of violation, et cetera. We also are looking at um, lien collections. That's been a big area for us, and um, we've been able to actually get more compliance, but we still have uh, many opportunities for improvement. And the last thing that we may partner with the Behavior Insights team on, we have a visit this week with Elspeth and her team, would be the just tax collection. Um, we think that if we change correspondence, we can get people who underreport to actually report what they actually owe. So that's a promising project, and we're delighted to use the expertise that Beth and her partners bring to the table. Great. So I have some questions, but I also want to open it up if there are any questions out here, because I um, would much rather have this be more of a dialogue. So if anybody has a question, I think that there are mics on either side, and you can just line up. If not, I will be happy, to, or you can just raise your hand, too. Um, I'll be happy to just ask my questions. Anyone, question, anyone have a question? Yep. Yep. So the, all the stuff from the behavioral insights in terms of code enforcement and compliance is like huge, would be huge for every city government. So how are you going to share those results and help other governments implement, implement the best practices that are being piloted in these cities? Right. And so the idea here is that we are creating an open knowledge base so that all of the practices that the cities are investing in were we're going to be writing up and sharing. So you can go to What Works Cities, um, the, the website, um, uh, whatworkcities.org, right? Is that right? Yeah, OK. Matt, I'm good. OK. Um, also, GovX, we have, we'll also be amplifying some of that. And then there's going to be sort of an open knowledge base. Um, and then there are also going to be these peer-to-peer -peer opportunities, so learning um, whether that's in webcasts that will be hosted by people from the cities talking about the processes that they went through to get the work done. Um, we are hosting regular office hours for some of our subject matter experts also, where we're going to be engaged with people who want to learn more about what's happening in the What Works cities. Um, but also, it's meant to be very organic. So if we see that there's a city that's 
struggling with a particular issue, then that's something that we'd like to apply resources to. And we expect that other cities are also facing some of those same barriers to success. And so we're creating really kind of this um, sort of bottoms up approach to the resources that are um, put out there. So we have already created a number of different Git books on the um, on our GovX website where you can take a look at some of the approaches that we're taking and some of the practices that we're putting into place. And then we're asking for community contributions into our thought process and whether or not there should be other types of materials that would be helpful. And it's not just for those cities that are participating. It's for any city who's interested um, in moving in, in forward momentum in the movement. And so the idea here is is that I think you know, the technology to a certain extent is the easy piece. It really is the program and the practices and making sure that there's some consistency across um, the way that this work happens that will really be sort of the end point um, benefit to the cities who are participating in doing the work. So any other question? I have a, I have a question for Mary Arbor um, about um, sort of, the, so if, it's, it's an interesting mix of people on the stage. We've got most of our cities that are represented here, you've either heard about their programs before, they're pretty advanced cities in their work, but Jackson is definitely one of our cities that has sort of taken off and is in the pole position to a certain extent. Um, but um, there, I'd love to hear like kind of what you think about the opportunity around the peer network um, with other mayors and also for your program teams. And then what are the things that you would love to um, learn from the cities who have a lot more experience doing the work, because you guys have really just taken on a lot, and so just, you know. Sure, so uh, one of my favorite sayings is that experience is not always the best teacher. And, um, and for mayors, we like, uh, um, we're always in a race to be second. And typically that means that we, you know, we really want to take advantage of any opportunity there is uh, not to uh, replicate something that could be detrimental uh, to what we're attempting to do. So uh, the opportunity to network for Jackson uh, is monumental because uh, we are just turning the corner on this conversation about what uh, open data looks like for our city. We understand the performance management conversation, but what we don't understand is some of the political landmines uh, that are out there when you're talking about open data. What we face, um, and, and you know, I definitely want to hear from uh, our, our counterparts in, in Chattanooga and Kentucky and uh, New Orleans. I, I, we really want to know how, how is it that their determinations uh, on what data is, and I use this, and I don't want y'all to misunderstand me, what data is safe uh, to have published. Um, you want to be open, you want to communicate appropriately, but you also don't want to be burned at the stake uh, for it at the same time. And so that's, that's going to be key, it's going to be pivotal. Uh, one of the things that I did not do um, as it relates to any of the folks on the stage, but we did do to some cities similar, we recently had a death of one of uh, a detainee in our holding cell. Well, immediately you have to get that information out because if the information gets out and you don't get the information out, then what does everyone think? We have something to hide. And if we get the information out and then we haven't told, we haven't gotten the right information out in the right way, we haven't communicated that, we haven't used that data to create the right narrative, then it creates a problem. So uh, being able to just sit and talk about how do you do those things is uh, monumental for us. And then finally, just, Justin, if you would raise your hand out there, Justin is, uh, he would be sitting up here with this group of gurus uh, <laughs> rather than me. Uh, but Justin, uh, in my opinion, is uh, phenomenal, but he's even more phenomenal with uh, the men and women that are sitting uh, at, on this panel to be able to maximize his potential. Any other questions or can I keep going? Oh. Yep.
Well, I'll just simply say this. Uh, later today, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more, but um, one of the five things that we've adopted is innovation. And so when, you're, when you are uh, Mississippi, you're Jackson, Mississippi, and you're leading in last, you get a pass on being innovative. You literally get a pass. You, you get an opportunity to go into the woodshed, create something, come out. If it works, everybody loves you and nobody's attempting to keep you in a box. Yeah, I would, I would definitely echo that. I think Louisiana and Mississippi are always in yeah. competition for 49 and yeah. 50th yeah. a lot of times. But I think, too, another great thing that comes out of it is you get, at least for the city of New Orleans, a lot of really bright people that are really open to taking on a challenge, kind of converging in one place. Um, people that are willing to take those risks and be more innovative. And we have a great mayor right now that really supports that kind of work. Um, so it's really been an exciting time um, to be working there. And I think it's, it, it is also helpful to know that when the idea for What Work Cities came about, there was a real deliberation around what cities would be eligible to participate. And, but there was sort of unanimous agreement that we were going to make it mid-sized cities, so cities with populations under one million. And a lot of that was generated from this, these conversations with mayors where we would go to mayors that were in cities like Jackson and, and, and Kansas City, and they, we would try to bring in examples from Chicago and New York and LA. And their first thing that they would say is, I'm not Chicago, I'm not New York, I'm not LA, I don't have the resources of those cities, I don't have the teams that those cities can draw, I don't, you know, and so I need to figure out what kind of, I want to do this work, but I need to figure out what, how the model looks in a city like mine. And so the idea here is that these are, this program is focused on mid-sized cities, these are scalable resources, they are meant to be very lightweight, we're not trying to create more work for an already overburdened bureaucracy, which all of these cities are. Um, but the idea here is how do we pour in additional resources so that we can take advantage of the opportunities that do exist. And I encourage you to go back to Jackson because it is, I've, you know, one of the most magical experiences I've had in recent times was our site visit there. So I think that, you know, this whole idea is that this is the opportunity and that these are the cities where you can have immediate impact and you can really, and that impact can be felt on the ground very quickly uh, with this type of work. So. Any other, oh, there's a question back there. Cam, is that you? Cam, Cam Caldwell? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So my question is, um, for all the cities that are on stage, I know a lot of you are working with other data-driven innovation projects um, you know, that focus on cities in the public sector, like Code for America fellowships, Rockefeller's 100 Resilient Cities program, and Google Fiber. Um, so there's a, there's a That's a great question. I'll speak quickly. One, I think you need a strategy. That strategy should be clear, concise, and compelling to everyone involved. Two, you need a good plan to implement the portfolio of work which is actually happening to achieve the strategy, which can include Socrata. That's a big part of what we want to do to create near real-time dashboards. But we want to use you know, GovX to help us dive deeper into places which we actually haven't given the proper, I guess, attention to. But there are also, I guess, low-hanging fruit, which we can use for the Behavior Insights team, and we have capacity to do so within the organization, but we have to balance the portfolio of work that is going to help us accomplish the strategy. Yeah, and I think, I think also for, from our perspective, th th like, a lot of these cities, or a lot of the cities that are in this population that we're serving, they would have been boxed out from a lot of those opportunities because they just didn't have the capacity to absorb participation in some of those programs. And so what we're trying to do is to give them some fundamental 
skill level so that they can raise their hand and say, I want to be part of 100 resilient cities. And I already have this infrastructure in place where we already have sort of these, um, you know, we already have governance in place. We already have an approach the way that we're able to move data through our city. And so we're not going deep on verticals and saying we're going to only focus on housing or public safety. But what we're saying is we want you to have a practice that's you can pull any problem that you're facing or any challenge that you want to hit, hit head on and you can pull it through this infrastructure and it's going to it's going to come out the other side better than where you know it entered and so the idea here is you know we want i think a lot of times some cities weren't able to even compete um, and as we emerge into the new economy this is a way for cities to be competitive that historically have been you know sort of left behind by some of the um, bigger uh, investments that were made so we're excited and want to partner with you know, and we and are partnering with a lot of the initiatives that are kind of, kind of cr cutting across this workload. I'm getting the high sign from Marcus, I think. <laughs> um, any one last question, or I just I, I really want to thank the panel um, for um, participating and, and being awesome, and, and also thanks to Socrata for having us. So thanks very much.